So today let's take a look at some RF modules from eBay. It's basically a 433 MHz transmitter and receiver for a low bitrate one-way digital communication. The transmitter can transmit low bitrate data and the receiver can receive it at a 433 MHz band, which can be used up to about 10 mW with no license. And these modules are super cheap. Both of them, including shipping, are less than one dollar. And these ones are the crudest and cheapest on eBay, probably. And I wanted to explore how do they work. And these can be, for example, used for some remote controls, garage door openers, wireless thermometer probes, and so on. Here's the transmitter, and it basically has just a grounded pin, power supply pin, and the data input pin. Just three pins. It's very simple to use. It has a couple coils on it, this ceramic resonator or crystal or whatever it is, and on the other side, a couple components, two resistors, two transistors, a capacitor, and that's it. And of course there are more versions on eBay, but they are all very similar. This is the simplest transmitter available with just transistors and no chip, and basically the transmitting frequency is the frequency of this crystal or resonator. There is no chip synthesizing the frequency out of a frequency of a completely different crystal. And here is the crudest receiver available on eBay. And it doesn't even have any crystal on it. It has this tuning coil, this coil, two transistors and this chip, which is LM358. Just a double op-amp and no more sophisticated chip. And absolutely nothing on the other side. Just the marking. It has four pins, but two of them are common, so it's again just ground, supply voltage and data. It's actually on two pins for some reason. And I was testing these modules and comparing them with some better modules. And here's an example of some better module, which has a more sophisticated chip on it and a crystal. It's typical for these better receivers to have some more sophisticated control chip in it and a crystal for stability instead of discrete transistors, some very simple chip and a tuning coil. And the sensitivity and stability of this thing is horrible. I was testing the range and I noticed that with this pair of modules the range isn't really great. The range is much better with a pair of good modules, for example this receiver and a matching transmitter. But strangely, the best range you can actually get when you use the combination of this dodgy transmitter and this good receiver. And the reason for that probably is that this eBay receiver has a very low sensitivity and they are probably making up for it using a more powerful transmitter. But even with a more powerful transmitter, the range is still poor. And then of course the best range is with this powerful transmitter and this sensitive receiver. I guess the good one says the sensitivity is about minus 114 decibel meters. This one says minus 105 decibel meters. But you can't really trust these numbers. And of course a lower number, I mean in magnitude, is a lower sensitivity. I started experimenting with these modules about 10 years ago already and these ones haven't really changed much in 10 years. Virtually the same ones are still sold nowadays. Not much different from the 10 years old ones and I was trying to use these modules in a wireless thermometer. This one has two channels and here is one of the transmitters for it with some temperature sensor, microcontroller and the transmitter module from eBay. And here is the receiver for it, receiving the temperature from it. And for the best range I'm using the dodgy high power transmitter combined with the sensitive receiver from a trusted supplier. And of course everybody is probably screaming for the schematics of these modules, so here is the schematic of the transmitter, the dodgy one from eBay, I guess the oldest version I encountered. It has two coils in it, two resistors, some capacitors and no chip, just two discrete transistors, some ceramic resonator or crystal or whatever that is. And it's basically just a self-oscillating transmitter, a single transistor oscillator with the crystal or resonator, and it goes straight into the antenna. And the other transistor is just modulating it, or in case of digital transmission, it's keying it. It's basically an on-off keying, it's just turning the transmitter on and off. This transistor just turns the transmitter on when logic 1 goes in and turns it off when logic 0 goes in. This transistor really just enables it and disables it. And then it's just a single transistor oscillator with an antenna connected straight to it. It probably really can't be much simpler than this. 
And this is the oldest version, and in the next one, this capacitor got omitted. Not sure if it works better without it, or they omitted it for cost cutting, because it basically somehow manages to operate without the capacitor. And also the next version got this 20 kilo ohm resistor replaced with 27 kilo ohms. And I guess this is just because the other one is also 27 kilo ohms, and it's probably cheaper to use both resistors the same resistance. On eBay I have seen pictures of a version with just one coil and also a version with no coil here and just a coil made of a loop of a trace on the board. I guess this works less efficiently because they had to reduce this resistor here all the way to 3.48 kilo ohms. Let's take a look at some pictures on eBay. This one has the other coil omitted here, or more likely replaced by some SMD coil. And this one has the 3.48 kilo ohm resistor here, which is marked 53B. And this marking is not very human readable, but you can use my online calculator for this. And 53B translates into 3.48 kilo ohms. And here's the version with the coil replaced completely by just a track on the board forming a loop, and the receiver seems to be just about the same. So that's the transmitter, which seems to be more powerful than the more trustworthy ones with a chip. But also the frequency stability is probably much worse. It might also have a lot of harmonics, the second, third harmonic and so on. And I also don't see any bandwidth limit in this. And of course when the edges of the data are too sharp, and the oscillator is turning on and off too fast, the amplitude is going up and down too quickly, it probably takes up too high bandwidth, it interferes with the nearby frequencies. I guess it has significant sidebands. And I measured it draws 12 milliamps at 4.8 volts. When it's transmitting continuously, basically the data input connected to the supply voltage. And the input power of it is 57 milliwatts, based on the current and voltage. But of course no transmitter is 100% efficient, so the transmitting power probably is lower than this, at least several times. And this thing doesn't seem to be really very efficient, just an oscillator with a wire antenna. And they sell it without the antenna, I put the antenna on it myself. So I guess the transmitting power can be several milliwatts, maybe several tens of milliwatts. Might be a bit over the 10 milliwatt limit, but still in the right ballpark. And of course the capacitors have no marking in it and it's not easy to measure, they are just several picofarads. I guess it can be something from 3 picofarads to about 10 picofarads. My multimeter was showing barely anything. And this one is the version with the capacitor here already omitted. This one in the schematic, the previous one had it. And also this resistor might be in some cases a too high resistance, especially when your microcontroller voltage is lower than the supply voltage here. I was for example using it at 4.5 volts here, but 1.8 volt for the microcontroller that has the output going into here. And I figured out in this sort of condition, this resistor has to be lower, at most 10 kilo ohms, and I changed it for 4.7 kilo ohms. Here is it already with the new resistor here. It's the base resistor for the modulation transistor. And let's show it in the original condition. This one used to have 27 kilo ohms here. And I was wondering if I could see something on an oscilloscope. But my best oscilloscope is up to 300 megahertz. So it's not really good at showing 433 megahertz. It will show something, but the amplitude will be quite underestimated and basically any waveform will turn into a sine wave. And the frequency seems to be roughly in the right ballpark, 430 something megahertz, but I guess this can't measure it very accurately because it's a too high frequency for it. And this is the transmitter continuously running. And now the other transmitter in my wireless thermometer and when I zoom it out, we will see the digital data. You can see the bits here. When I freeze the tent, you can see the oscillator starting and it actually seems it takes some time for the oscillator to start up. The time base is one microsecond per division, so you can get an idea. Now two microseconds, the oscillator takes several microseconds to reach the final full amplitude. Here is the oscillator starting again with the other channel indicating the data input logic level. And here is the oscillator stopping when the logic level goes from high to low. And it takes some time for the oscillator to stop and... And also the amplitude seems to go down, and then a little bit back up and then down. This is actually weird. 
but of course for a low bandwidth or a low bitrate it's better when the amplitude goes up and down slowly because then the transmitter doesn't take that much bandwidth and I'm just capacitively coupling the probe to the antenna like this so that's about what I can tell about the transmitter given the limitations of my equipment and now let's take a look at the receiver this is the schematic I reverse engineered a long time ago and it contains no special chips just an op amp and two transistors and the first transistor seems to be some sort of RF amplifier there is some tuned circuit with a capacitor and a coil well tuned but not adjustable it's just three turns of a wire with no adjustment so this is a very wide bandwidth filter then it goes into this amplifier with just a resistor in its collector and then it's coupled into the second stage and looking at this, this has to be a regenerative or super regenerative receiver it doesn't look like a super heterodyne definitely and it doesn't look like a TRF either it could be a regenerative receiver which has a stage in it which sort of works as an oscillator but the feedback in it is set just below the oscillations just below the level where the oscillations start so it will only start oscillating when it receives a signal at a similar frequency but regenerative receivers are very tricky you have to precisely set it just below the oscillation threshold and it might over time drift and you have to readjust it and there seems to be just one adjustment, just the coil, the screwable core in this coil, which I guess adjusts the frequency it's receiving, but a regenerative receiver would probably have a second adjustment to adjust the level of feedback to be able to get it just below the oscillations. But this one doesn't have anything like this in it. And that's why I guess it's a super regenerative receiver, not just a regenerative. This is a high frequency oscillator which is self-quenching it basically starts oscillating and then the oscillations stop so it sort of oscillates at two frequencies at the same time at the high frequency it's receiving but also at a lower frequency where it periodically starts and stops the high frequency oscillations if it was an audio receiver the starting and stopping frequency would still have to be at least a couple times higher frequency than what you can hear in a super regenerative radio the oscillator runs at the frequency you're receiving but is also periodically stopping and starting the oscillator at let's say several tens of kilohertz to about several hundred kilohertz of course super regenerative receivers are not really used much anymore but it's basically the cheapest way of getting some sort of sensitivity with the minimum amount of components but still the stability and sensitivity is poor and also the selectivity is poor and that's why probably every radio since the 40s was a super heterodyne not this or TRF let's go back to this I guess this stage oscillates at 433 MHz but also these oscillations are periodically starting and stopping at a much lower frequency tens of kilohertz or hundreds of kilohertz the frequency it's starting and stopping has to be much lower than this but at the same time at least several times higher than the maximum bitrate let's try to stick an oscilloscope somewhere into it probably close to the transistor emitter or collector and here is I guess the emitter of the transistor and it seems like there are some oscillations starting and stopping and this is happening at about 400 something kilohertz of course the frequency measurement isn't very accurate but one microsecond and this is about two and a half divisions two and a half microseconds one divided by two and a half microseconds is 400 kilohertz and this frequency isn't very stable you can see these are shaky the only one stable and sharp is the one at the trigger point and when I zoom it way in you will probably see some high frequency oscillations on it but it will be poorly visible because it's beyond the bandwidth of this oscilloscope so let's go back to this and having an oscillation here at about 400 kilohertz and I stress 400 kilohertz not megahertz sort of proves that this is a super regenerative receiver this is basically the frequency at which it is starting and quenching the 433 megahertz oscillations instead of you manually setting it just below the oscillations it sort of automatically finds the threshold of the oscillations for you and and then it always sort of moves just below the oscillations and then it's slowly increasing its sensitivity until it hits the oscillation again and then it again reduces its sensitivity below the oscillations and this pattern keeps repeating I hope my explanation makes at least a little bit of sense 
it sort of pulse with modulating its sensitivity, looking for the threshold of the oscillations, where basically the sensitivity is the highest, and every time it hits the oscillations, the sensitivity automatically goes a little bit back. And out of curiosity, looking at the same thing on an analog oscilloscope, this is one microsecond per division. And when I just touch the antenna of the receiver, you can see the quenching frequency changing. The quenching frequency is quite random, but it actually doesn't have to be very stable. And of course when this stage starts oscillating, it draws more current. And this is probably how the oscillations are quenched. It's powered via this coil and this resistor, and when it draws more power, it basically pulls its supply voltage down, and this quenches the oscillations. This entire stage is powered through this inductor and this resistor, and the more it oscillates, the more voltage drop on this resistor, and this is also where the demodulated signal comes from. The signal comes from the voltage drop of this resistor, which is proportional to the current consumption of this stage, and then the signal basically is just amplified using two op-amps, both of them working as amplifiers with a very high gain. So it amplifies the signal until it's limited into a square wave. And this turns into the digital data coming from the output. And I'm trying to do some sort of Fourier transform thing with the transmitter. Not sure exactly how it's supposed to be used, but there seems to be a peak at 434 MHz. Not sure what this does. Are these occasional spikes the second and third harmonic? I guess this could be the harmonics. Let's zoom what I think is the second harmonic. This is the bass frequency again. Do I see something like sidebands here? Not sure how to exactly use the FFT in this oscilloscope, and its bandwidth might be too low for this thing anyway. But of course, this crew, the single transistor thing, definitely has to have some harmonics. Out of curiosity, connecting an LED and a speaker to the output of the receiver. And you can hear some digital communication. The 433 MHz band is used quite a lot. And let's try my wireless thermometer. And when data is spelled ATAD on your transmitter, you know you're getting the best. So that's these eBay modules for well under one dollar, including shipping, both of them. And I might try some other modules in the future. And I will also show how I'm using RF modules in my wireless thermometer. So that's it then, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.